and I especially speak from a coloured perspective. It is, it is one of my biggest pet hates that we make everything that, that transpired in our lives up until this moment an excuse not to succeed. I think I was about 12 or 13 years old when I, growing up in the Cape Flats, I remember this day vividly. It was a Friday afternoon and spending time. The, the common thing for us to do on a Friday afternoon with the boys in the neighborhood is to go out and play football in the local schoolyard. And this specific day, I was standing on the corner waiting for one of my friends, or standing with one of my friends, waiting for the rest of the guys to come to the corner. Um, and then we would jump the yard and play football. But this time around, uh, a Shaw Salon aeroplane f came over the airwaves. So um, I'm from Hedefeld, so it's very close to the airport. And I remember saying to my one friend, one day when I'm older, I'm going to fly in one of those things. And what he said next really defined a part of my life. Because uh, he said to me, he turned to me and said, Preston, things like that don't happen to people like us. That was a defining moment in my life because I, I posed my self the question, is this what I wanted for the rest of my life? And I began a journey of working very really hard to, to make something out of my life. And at age 16 years old, I was really privileged to turn professional as a football player. My first two years of professional football was um, extremely tough um, because I had an injury at a very young age and so my whole world came crumbling down but the, the time between 16 years old and 23 years old really defined my thinking. Um, it gave me, of all else failed, that my football career never reached the peak that I, that I envisioned, that I wanted for my life or what everyone else thought my potential was. It taught me worldviews and worldviews that could give me principles and values that could work my way out of my Cape Flats understanding and into an understanding where there was more, for, more to my life than what I was just used to seeing young men and women uh, waste away. While growing up, I had a neighbour, Mr. Fredericks, that um, my dad went through a very challenging time in the early stages of my life. Um, and Mr. Fredericks played a pivotal role in becoming a father type figure to me. Um, not formally, but subconsciously just showed interest in my life and uh, he was the one that used to pull me off the street corners, he was the one that used to pull me off the, um, away from the trouble and kind of played that, really that hard role. I started realizing that God has really favored my life, that he sent into my life so many great father figures that would um, establish a deep down rooted value and character that I knew was beyond the circumstances of the Cape Flats. You can only so far blame the circumstances and the surroundings. And even though I was inspired by that question that day as a 12 year old about flying in an aeroplane, um, my dream did come through and, and oftentimes I want to tell people, sometimes we go for the big dream, but sometimes it's the small dreams that builds and become the building blocks for the, build, for the bigger dreams. And all I wanted to do was fly in a plane. And I got to fly in a plane, but that plane has taken me all across the world. I, I maybe had this picture of playing in Champions League football and traveling the world and representing my country at a World Cup. And I think every boy um, growing up in the Cape Flats that plays football has this dream. And yet I was on my way there. But because of the failure, I had to learn lessons out of that that could carry me and teach those lessons, valuable lessons to the boys that I work with today, uh, whether it is in juvenile prison, whether it is in schools um, and maximum security, um, adult prisons, wherever God takes me, I share these values. I believe South Africa needs new stories. When I say new stories, you know, we, we thank God for the Nelson Mandelas and the Steve Picos and all the people that's gone before us. But I think this generation needs new stories. Yeah, we need new stories of, of young women and men that is not riding on the wave of people that um, fought in the struggle. Hi, my name is Preston Yomlut and this is my story. What's your story?